Many times we make mistakes as young married. And those mistakes we make without knowing. So today we are sharing bedroom mistakes. What are those things that are a complete mistake or a turn off or a marriage killer when you are newly married? Stay tuned and listen to this one mistake which I made that almost cost me my marriage. And if you have not subscribed before, kindly subscribe. That is all that I'm asking of you. And then we will learn and grow together. Back to our story, bedroom mistakes. And so I remember when I had just gotten married and, you know, I was so excited and my relatives, my aunties had, you know, cautioned me that when you're married, you handle things quietly uh, in a place where the children cannot hear. If things have gone wrong, you handle them quietly. And so poor me, I knew that the best place to handle these things would be the bedroom. And so we enjoyed in the bedroom. We, it was a fun place. Of course, I was changing bed sheets. I was, you know, making sure that that bed looks nice. What is that one mistake that I made that made my bedroom un, you know, unbearable, uncomfortable? That even when you go there to sleep, the morale to do what people do in the bedroom completely dies. You know, like it dies. You, you have no uh, uh, good memories of that bedroom. You have no excitement for lovemaking in that bedroom because you made a mistake. What is that mistake that I made that I want to share with you and to encourage you so that you do not make that same mistake like I did? The mistake that I made is that I turned my bedroom into a boardroom and a courtroom. Yes, I did. Now, by turning my bedroom into a boardroom, I carried so many things, a bedroom and a courtroom. I carried so many office things that I always discussed with my husband when we are in the bedroom. And guess what? You know, you're seated there and, you know, bedroom should be a mood for relaxation, should be a mood for happiness, it should be a mood for lovemaking, it should be a mood, you know, of that royalty, like you are royal when you are in your bedroom. You are good for a massage, you're good for a touch, you're good for everything. And so every time we entered into that bedroom, I would come with this story. Can you imagine that person at the office? Can you imagine she did this? Can you imagine she did this? Can you imagine she talked to me like this? And the story would be about all the wrong things that happened in the office. Well, the, the gentleman's face could turn and maybe he could turn to anger. If someone has treated me badly, his emotions would, you know, be that mood of a heart broken and uh, if he says that I had made a mistake of course he would turn the judgment towards me and he would say oh you shouldn't have done that it attracted the treatment that you received and you know where that takes me into quarreling into asking why he doesn't believe in me into judging and so the story would go on and on and it would lead to a silent treatment. I had turned the bedroom into a boardroom. And so what happens into the bedroom is that in boardrooms, tempers flare. And so because of the boardroom discussions I brought, the tempers would flare. And then number two, I had turned my bedroom into a courtroom. Every time there was a disagreement, I would wait for him to get into the bedroom. And we would quarrel and quarrel and quarrel, raise our voices that the children would even come and listen through the door. And I just realized that emotionally, both of us were getting detached from each other. You know, we're no longer connecting like we're, con like we're connecting. I enter into the bedroom. I am like ready for the next fight. He is ready to dip, to you not know, jump into the bed and cover his head because he's expecting a fight. 
and my goodness, I didn't enjoy the bedroom. And so one day I just woke up, I said, why do we have to quarrel in the bedroom? Because when you are there, you can shout at each other. And let me tell you, a slap can come as fast as possible because you are in a quiet place. You are hidden. The tempers can rise. How do we avoid the rising tempers hmm? and the rising voices when we, we are not happy with each other? I learned from my grandmother that if you want to quarrel with your husband, if you have issues you need to sort out, go into a public place. Go into a field, a big play field, where you can see everyone who is approaching and where no one can hear what you're discussing. But you will be so uncomfortable to raise voices because you don't want people to hear you. You're not going to threaten each other because you don't want people to see you. And so you will keep your, your voices down and you'll be talking like human beings. By the time you leave that playground, you have already resolved your issues and you are ready to make it up to each other when you enter the bedroom. And so as I conclude, the bedroom is a place of love, of peace, of royalty, of comfort and of love making. So don't make your bedroom a boardroom. Don't carry office stuff into your bedroom. Don't carry quarrels into your, your, your boardroom. Leave quarrels for uh, disagreements, actually not quarrels. Leave disagreements to be sorted out in an open space where you will be uncomfortable that people are listening to you and you will keep your voices down and you will not have any drama because you don't want people to see your drama. Thank you so much for watching. I will remind you again, look at the subscribe button. If you have not subscribed, kindly subscribe. And thank you so much. God bless you.